Well, good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Monday, March 27th, 2023. And our top story today, cybersecurity and data protection is at the top of fiduciary concerns. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Carlos Pankson is a vice president for the Center for Fiduciary Excellence at Broadridge FI360 Solutions. Carlos, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. My pleasure, Jeff. It's, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you. And today we're talking about cybersecurity, security breaches. And I, I guess for the context here, we've heard so much about telecom, banking, and other, other industries facing data breaches, privacy concerns. How does this all translate to the retirement industry? Well... I think security breaches are, are going to occur in any industry which uses uh, personally identifiable information or PII, uh, you know, things such as names, addresses, phone numbers, social insurance numbers. And uh, the retirement industry isn't an exception. Hackers and, and uh, criminals are going to exploit any possible way to collect data, uh, which can be used to extract or extort a financial reward. Um, most of the providers in the retirement space naturally come in contact with PII. And, and even if it's not PII, it could be information which is used to extract PII at a later time. So uh, the providers, which include record keepers, third party administrators or advisors, can unknowingly be used by criminals to extract money from retirement plan participants, whether it be through a hack of a database or through impersonation. Yeah. Uh, impersonation is particularly common because without forms of multi-factor identification um, and with all the you know, social media uh, that's out there and how much people use it, it's quite easy to get enough information on a retirement plan participant and fool an agent at a uh, record keeper's help desk, for, for example. Yeah. So yeah. uh, providers should really assume it's just a matter of time before they're impacted and, uh, and just be prepared for that day. Yeah, and, and I think you, you make a really good point. And, and this, is a, this is a topic in the industry that is often talked about. We're gonna get into that in more detail with you, but let's start with the Department of Labor because they, they are kind of the, one of the governing bodies. You know, there's a Securities Exchange Commission, Department of Labor, and they have really put out some I don't know, guidance is the right word, but at least direction as it com becomes, comes to cybersecurity and data protection. What, what, what have they said in, in particular about cybersecurity? And is this an important consideration for planned fiduciaries and record keepers alike? Um, they need to be thinking about this. Yep, um, you've got it. The DOL's program is not actually a regulation, um, uh, but it is a best practices guide and it, it's, it is their publication. So it, it is wise for providers to be aware of it and treat it like a regulation. Um, yeah. Historically, the DOL has introduced special exams uh, where they've targeted a special issue like this. A few years ago, they did uh, launch a program focused on uh, cybersecurity, in fact, um, and some experts tell me that uh, this is going to return in some fashion. Um, a, a different example of such a program where they put em was when we, they put emphasis on uh, missing participants of a retirement plan. And uh, in their audits, they, act, they asked about the specific procedures the plans had in place to identify and manage uh, missing participants. Uh, or even in 2013, they, they published a best practices guide for target date funds. And that has been uh, referenced in, in their examination. So uh, cybersecurity uh, is going to be treated the same way, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it's really, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to just follow up with that to that and say, and ask you a question about planned fiduciaries, because there's so much on their plate, whether you're an advisor, consultant, uh, you're, a, you're a plan sponsor, an employer that sponsors a retirement plan, or you're a record keeper. 
you know, the industry right now we're dealing with Secure 2.0. There are 94 plus provisions there. Retirement income, you know, personalization. Are, are fiduciaries talking about this? Are, are plan sponsors talking about this? And are they doing taking the right steps to uh, ensure cybersecurity for themselves and their participants? Well, uh, you're right. They, the plan fiduciaries have uh, extensive responsibilities. Um, our own organization has published a full handbook on all the responsibilities that um, an investment steward has. Um, it's called the Prudent Practices for Investment Stewards. And, and we list 21 different practices on managing investments with references to all those regulations. So, so it is an important role and, and it can be overwhelming. Um, but uh, this is why often many of these responsibilities are contracted to, uh, to advisors uh, as uh, co-fiduciaries to plans. Uh, but let's face it, even for advisors, uh, the fiduciary responsibilities require um, a, a lot of work and a lot of time and effort. So now along comes the real risk of these cybersecurity breaches, you know, already uh, added to a plate of, of the risks they had. And yeah, it's, it's possible that uh, attention to these vulnerabilities uh, can be overlooked. So... Uh, uh, there are many hours, uh, <laughs> there's only so many hours in a day and providers are attending to the immediate needs of their clients uh, and uh, and their demands. Uh, so ultimately, I think more staff and uh, or outsourcing is going to be required to handle those. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. And, and you know, that, that I guess Arisa is pretty clear that you can hire prudent uh, fiduciaries to assist you in, you know, you never lose the fiduciary responsibility, but you can hire prudent professionals who can help you fulfill those responsibilities. But when it comes to cybersecurity, if I'm an advisor, consultant, uh, you know, investment consultant, someone who's responsible for retirement plans, do I need to become an expert now? Do I need to pull out my Ethernet and my technology books and start becoming a cybersecurity expert now? I, I, I don't think so. Uh, whether you're the, uh, the plan fiduciary itself, um, uh, or, or the advisor, I think the most important thing is that you, you really do have to be aware of the prevailing practices. Um, so if, if you're the plan sponsor, for example, you need to know to ask questions about it and, and what questions to ask. Uh, and frankly, the US uh, DOL's uh, best practice guide is a fantastic uh, resource uh, to do that. Um, from an advisory perspective, uh, again, I don't think you have to be an expert, but again, be aware. Um, some advisory firms, depending on their size, um, have their own experts uh, on staff, which would be great. Uh, not all firms have that expertise in-house, but uh, um, external experts in the form of IT firms and IT services firms, uh, they would have the expertise naturally. So. It really is incumbent on the advisor uh, to make sure that that expertise is accessible one way or another. So ignorance is absolutely not an option. Yeah, you don't. And, wanna, and by you, the way, the, the same holds true for record keepers and TPAs and so on. Yeah, I was gonna. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was gonna uh, say, you know, you can't claim ignorance when you're being sued for uh, a data breach or uh, an investment return that just doesn't pan out or an investment, you know, that you're, you're still responsible. You, that is just not a defensible position. Uh, Carlos, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about fiduciary due diligence and cybersecurity. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on VRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? 
especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Tax audits, tax liens, wage garnishments. Every day we hear stories like this about good folks who are simply struggling to pay their bills. Each of them are living a frightening IRS tax nightmare and they are afraid it will destroy their lives. I'm a divorced single mom and my ex-husband left me and the kids with a lot of unpaid bills, including unpaid taxes. I was really starting to show my stress on my kids because the IRS had sent me a letter demanding a huge payment from me. I couldn't afford it. So then the IRS was threatening to garnish my wages. I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. That would have put me over the edge financially. It truly seemed hopeless, but then a friend at work told her to call the tax relief line. The people at the tax relief line, they told me about something called innocent spouse relief. They worked it out so that all of the taxes from my ex are not my problem. I don't know how that works and, and I don't care. All I care about is that I don't owe the IRS a dime and they are not going to take my paycheck. Even if it seems hopeless, you should call the number on your screen right now. There is absolutely no cost for the call or the consultation. You are under no obligation. If you are worried that the IRS could garnish your wages, seize your assets, even take your home, call us right now. The tax relief line is here to help you. Now you have a knowledgeable, professional team of tax experts that are ready to negotiate with the IRS and fight for you to save you money. The Tax Relief Line's professionals have successfully negotiated thousands of cases, reducing and sometimes even eliminating the tax debt for their clients. It's very easy to get started. Simply call the number on your screen right now. You don't have to live in fear anymore. The call and the consultation are free. Well, Carlos, thanks so much for sticking with us this morning. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. My pleasure. Uh, cybersecurity, Carlos, it's a, it can be a very generic word. I mean, you can apply uh, hacking, you can apply data security, privacy. Um, but let's talk about the review of a service provider. What goes into that fiduciary review? What do I need to know if I'm an advisor consultant and I need to do that cybersecurity review um, in an RFP or I need to do, perform due diligence, due diligence on behalf of a client? Well, uh, for background, our firm does assessments on uh, the types of service providers you're mentioning here. Um, our, our assessments normally focus on investment fiduciary practices for stewards and advisors and managers and operational best practices for record keepers and TPAs. So we, we do this day in, day out. Um, we've actually added an option to include a review based on uh, the DOL's uh, cybersecurity best practices. Um, the DOL uh, published three guidelines, as your listeners might know, one for participants, uh, one for planned stewards, uh, which I mentioned previously, and one for service providers. And uh, the guideline contains 12 best practices supported by dozens of specific steps. Uh, so there's, there's a long list, but um, you know, they will include things like having a formal documented cybersecurity program, uh, conducting annual risk assessments, conducting periodic cybersecurity training for staff and having um, a business continuity plan. So an important element uh, of the program is the incident response plan. Um, uh, so for example, in the event of a breach, uh, depending on its severity, the plan has to have things like, you know, informing law enforcement, notifying the insurance company, 
um, investigation of the event itself, um, giving participants information to reduce the impact of the breach on them. And, uh, and finally, of course, just fixing the problem that caused uh, the breach uh, in the first place. But Carlos, uh, we talked earlier in the, in the first segment about what some retirement plan advisors are doing, what considerations they are having when they are thinking about their services. And look, the larger providers, larger retirement plan advisory firms, they can afford to hire and bring in IT professionals. That's, those are costly skills that you, you need to acquire over a long period of time. So the, hence, it's more expensive. But what about smaller firms? What are they doing um, in terms of their offering? Uh, for towards clients when it comes to cybersecurity. Yeah, I mean the the advisors that I've talked to, uh, most of who are certified in our program, uh, frankly, they're they're in various stages of implementing the practices one way or another. Uh, these, you know, it is a pretty ambitious endeavor, um, and as you mentioned, does require um, con um, considerable resources, but. Um, they, they are taking steps. We're seeing things like um, encrypting sensitive data within their own databases. Um, some advisors uh, have taken the step of not even holding uh, PII in their database. So they, they say we're not storing any of that just to uh, limit the risk and leave that to be managed by the record keeper and others. Um, if they do deal with uh, participants directly and have to transmit uh, PII. Um, you know, I've seen them implement uh, secure uh, software packages for email so that any email transmission um, is, uh, is securely done. Um, in, in general, though, I think that the advisors have to find a way to be as adherent as possible to these uh, practices and then um, tell their clients that uh, they're, they're on this journey, they're doing it. Uh, when they do become completely compliant, uh, we actually certify for that. And, and uh, while, while none of this can guarantee that they won't suffer a, a breach, um, it does demonstrate their awareness and attention uh, to this very important topic. Yeah, and, and Carlos, one of the key functions of the retirement plan advisor is the RFP process or the due diligence process. Um, you know, as we talked about earlier, there's a lot of services that record keepers are performing. Not only the administration of the plan, but also retirement income, personalization, some of the things I ticked off earlier. Um, where does data privacy and cybersecurity fit in that strata when it comes to the RFP? I mean, this is taking more and more uh, r digital room on the RFP document in the RFP document. Uh, from the documents and the RFPs that I have seen, yes, it's <laughs> started off with a question or two, and it is increasing certainly in terms of real estate on the RFP and and relevant. So, uh, really, a short answer is absolutely yes. It. It, it really must be included. If I'm a plan sponsor, it must be included in the RFP. And frankly, again, the DOL uh, document, uh, Tips for Hiring a Service Provider with Strong Cybersecurity Practices is, is the title. Um, that's a pretty great place to start for any plan looking to question their service providers. Carlos, when you project out and you look into the future, I mean, you, you already talked about it. every industry is going to face hacking, data privacy concerns from outsiders. Uh, what does the future hold? I mean, when you're thinking about what your services you're offering to advisors, uh, to, to investment consultants, et cetera, what, where do you think the, the industry is going to go when it comes to the retirement plan industry and, and cybersecurity? Well, it is going to become more regulated. As we've uh, mentioned previously, the SEC the SEC has always had some regulations with respect to cybersecurity. They've got new regulations on the horizon. Uh, these are currently actually open for comments. Um, and it's going to make it mandatory for advisors to have um, uh, those practices in place. So uh, listeners should know that the SEC in the past, in fact, has sanctioned advisors uh, for inadequate cybersecurity. So, you know, in my view, cyber criminals have shown an incredible ability to figure out and exploit computer systems. 
and business practices and even human behavior over time. No, no matter what system we build, someone will find a way to get into it. Um, so we're gonna continue to develop new technologies and protocols like the multi-factor uh, authorization and different ways to secure data. Uh, but it, it always feels as if businesses and governments and regulators are often playing catch up to these bad guys. Um, yeah. So the future's, you know, got one thing certain, we've got to be aware of the risks and, and the practices, the cybersecurity practices have to be well ingrained into our corporate culture, uh, not to mention our, our own personal lives. Um, it's just gonna, and as you've mentioned, it's gonna take more resources and sadly uh, that's gonna drive up costs for services, but um, that's, uh, that's just the world we live in. Yeah. Well, I mean, I personally would pay more if I knew my data. Uh, I'm not saying that much more, but I would I would be comfortable with paying a little bit more knowing that the allocation to resources is going to protecting data, data privacy, all the things that we're talking about today. I mean, you need you need to have that because you need that level of trust if you're if you're providing services to the broad, you know, not, not to anybody in, in our community. Uh, Carlos, we're going to have to leave it there. Great conversation. Great topic. I, I think we'll be talking about this for quite some time to come. Great to see you. Thanks for sharing your perspective. My pleasure, Jeff. Great to spend time with you. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more and all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? We'll visit our website and, of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN AM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.